day. Stay tuned. Your local news is next. Coming up on News Center 13 to 10, three children are found dead in a van and a suicide murder is suspected. That and more plus sports and weather coming up next at 10. From WEAU TV Eau Claire, this is News Center 13 at 10. Your first choice for news, weather, and sports. Good evening. Welcome to our 10 o'clock news. There's a new twist that might be ammunition for Susan Smith's defense. Proof that when she was 16, her stepfather molested her. Today, the court unsealed records that show Beverly Russell did physically abuse his stepchild ordered him to undergo therapy and to live apart from the minor until it is safe for the family to be reunited. Russell agreed, signed the court order, and the case was sealed. No charges were ever brought against him. After court-ordered therapy, Russell was back with the family when Susan married David Smith in 1991. He stood by his stepdaughter when she was charged with murder, even mortgaged his $165,000 house to pay for her defense. At the lake where the two boys died, most said this revelation would make no difference. If you have problems, you, you know, you have family, you put your kids with them. You know, there's always ways around it, but that, she didn't have to do that. Even though she was molesting, I mean, she's old enough to know right from wrong. Russell's attorney said his client would not comment. Up next for Susan Smith, it will be determined if she is mentally com compliment to stand trial. Authorities in North Carolina say it looks like a murder-suicide. The police chief in Kill Devil Hills, North Carolina, says Douglas Mont committed suicide with a gun that was used on his three children. The children's bodies were discovered in a burned out van. Mott shot himself when police found him in a wooded area nearby. Police say the autopsy showed the children had been shot before the fire. Investigators don't know why Mott and his children were in North Carolina, much less whether children were killed. Mott lived in Delaware, and the children had lived with their mother also in Delaware. She reported them missing Saturday after they did not return from a regular visit with their father. Concerns about the placement of convicted rapist George Heidel wrote in Eau Claire are not only coming from the community, but from the father of one of those currently residing at the Trinity Halfway House, where Heidel Road will begin serving his parole next week. Alan Novak's 19-year-old son, Chad, pictured here at age 14, has been living in Trinity since January. He was convicted last year on a felony count of possession with intent to deliver a controlled substance. Despite assurances, the elder Novak says he's concerned for his son's safety. I don't think they can guarantee my son 24-hour safety. I don't think they can guarantee the community 24-hour safety. I think they're stepping way out when they say that. I do not believe there is they can guarantee 24-hour safety. Novak calls Hartle Road socially dysfunctional and cites his previous record of successfully skipping out on parole as reason for his concern. Last week, Eau Claire City Council President Mark Lewis created a citizen's task force as the result of a special council meeting called in response to the announcement that Harlow Road would be housed in Eau Claire. Joining us tonight from our newsroom is the Reverend Bill Hines, who is chairman of the citizen's task force. Bill, what is the role of the task force? Well, John, the task force, after they passed their two resolutions, we're very concerned that all lines of communication were open and that the citizenry had a chance to uh, get the quickest and the, and the most objective response uh, from the, all of the parties. That would be uh, the Department of Corrections, uh, the, uh, the Sheriff's Department, Trinity Team, the City Council, everybody involved. Also an opportunity for citizens to voice their opinions and, um, and let the authorities know uh, what was happening and what their sentiments were. Are you looking to stop Hartle Road from being in Eau Claire? Uh, that's a question I really have no answer for. Uh, my understanding in my last conversation with uh, Mr. Andy Brunk uh, at the Department of Corrections was that they, uh, for all they knew, uh, he was coming. Uh, my conversations with Mark Lewis uh, are, for all intentions, they have uh, no desire to have him here and will do everything to prevent him from coming. No final decision has been made to the best of my knowledge. I tried to check just before coming uh, to uh, TV 13 tonight and uh, there still is no de definitive answer. Have you had any indication that he would be placed anywhere else? No, none whatsoever. Uh, all the planning that I understand is uh, t uh, taking place is uh, on the assumption that it will be 
Trinitim and all the planning by the citizens that I'm in conversation with are that he will not be placed at Trinitim. You have a meeting scheduled for tomorrow night at City Hall. Is that open to the public? Well, uh, because we are a uh, creation of the City Council, uh, we're subject to the open meeting law and the purpose of the meeting is to bring together the task force so that we can discuss what we're about, how we should do it, uh, uh, what lines of communication there should be. Uh, anyone can come. Uh, we would invite people to come and, uh, and visit with us and uh, let their opinions be known. Uh, they would not be part of the official proceedings of the uh, meeting, but uh, it's open to the public. Okay, that meeting's at City Hall at 7 tomorrow night. 7 p.m. in the North Conference Room. All right, thank you for being with us. You bet. Crime has become the nation's number one concern, especially when it comes to youth violence. In Eau Claire County, officials say 15 to 20 percent of juvenile delinquents are committing 70 percent of juvenile crime. People are outraged and want to feel safe. Oftentimes, the solution seems to be punishment, but how well does the juvenile code work, and how's it is, how does it serve the 70 percent of juveniles who only get in trouble once or twice? In part two of a special report, Joel Nelson and photographer Scott Parker look at one success story that came out of the juvenile justice system. Josh Grace is a goalie for the Chippewa Falls Cardinal hockey team. He recently recorded his first win and shutout against Eau Claire Memorial. But perhaps the biggest save Grace made was the save of his life. I'm not skipping school as much. I'm not partying. I'm not stealing things and not running away from home. I fight with my parents as much. Grace was in a group home in Ladysmith for seven months until earlier this fall. He often got into fights with his parents, stole property, and ran away. This is a typical start to a life of crime for a young person. But something happened to Grace. What kept him from going deeper into the system? I think the system can work for kids. It, a lot of it depends upon the individual. and. A, a lot of it depends upon the age of the child. I mean, the sooner that a child can get help and get into the system, there's, you know, much more that's going to happen for that child. Campbell deals with juveniles and their families every day. He works to get kids out of the system once they are in it. On the other side, there is Rob Fadness. He has to deal with juveniles who have committed a crime. Kids seem to have more mobility. They seem to have less, less supervision. And uh, any time that younger kids are left unsupervised for extended periods of time, they can't be expected to make the right decisions all the time. One teenager, who we call Charlie, made some bad decisions when he was growing up. Charlie is 18 now, but started dealing drugs and stealing when he was a minor. He blames the system for his problems, saying that if his parents would have cared, he wouldn't be in trouble today. I mean, you can't just like pawn kids off into these like group homes and stuff I mean you gotta work with them try to work with them first so how do we help these kids some say it would be best to punish the parents if their kids commit crimes others would like kids who commit violent crimes to be locked away for good perhaps it is time for parents to teach kids accountability at an early age and if kids do get involved with the system parents need to realize they have a lot to do with the rehabilitation they're taught to look at the system as, you know, don't get involved with them, stay away, you know, the cops are bad, the courts are bad, you know, social workers are bad. Then that child grows up with that feeling. If you're willing to work with them, you're going to do fine. But if you're just going to go against it all the time, it's not going to work out. Maybe we need to celebrate the successes, like Josh Grace, who plans on going to college. Maybe more importantly, he also plans on leading a crime-free life. Joel Nelson, New Center 13. The Juvenile Justice Study Committee has finished its recommendations on changing the juvenile code. It recommends lowering adult court jurisdiction to age 17, the age of delinquency to 10 years, and age confidentiality requirements. The report has been forwarded to the governor and the state legislature. Still to come on New Center 13 at 10, Chippewa Falls is taking steps at a new sports complex center, hopefully by the year 2000. Closed captioning of New Center 13 is brought to you in part by Quick Trip. A policy the Eau Claire School Board believed would provide greater safety to students traveling to sports tournaments was pushed aside tonight following opposition from many at the meeting, 
who said the policy would take away from parents making those decisions. Superintendent Dr. Lee Hansen said with the policy, the district would assume greater liability in order to offer a safe way for students to travel to tournaments. But most of the crowd was filled with students and some parents who felt the board shouldn't be making what they felt were parental decisions. I realize from what I've heard, a lot of you are in favor of passing this policy, but it, it isn't, in our view, a good policy. It hurts the students at our school. It doesn't give the parents the parental job it's pretty much the school board taking over the duty as a parent, not allowing for themselves what is safe and what is not safe for the students. Following several presentations, the board failed to act on the policy, meaning current practices involving students and their travel to Madison will remain. However, school officials said the policy could be considered again at a later date. Recreational sports have become so big in Chippewa Falls that there aren't enough facilities to use in the area. So officials and private citizens in Chippewa Falls are taking a bold step to provide state-of-the-art facilities to the public.